Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday Eve. One more day for this work week. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Hey, Heartbeat Yolanda. Hey, Heartbeat Andrea. Great triumphant Thursday. Love it, love it, love it. Hey, Heartbeat Doris. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you guys. I pray you received sweet sleep last night and woke up with bells and whistles on, ready to take on this day. Wherever you are, come on and give God a praise because he deserves our praise. He's just good like that. He's God. He's the sovereign one. He's the redeemer. He's the healer. He's the provider. He's whatever you need him to be whenever you need him to be it. And for that alone, he deserves our praise on this morning. He is our God. Hallelujah. There's no one like him. You know, nobody can compare to him. Nobody can even come close to his awesomeness, his greatness. He's just good, good, good like that. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to the author of finisher of our faith, to the lifter of our heads, to the one who wakes us up each and every day, to the one who took the time to breathe the breath of life into us, to the one who keeps calling your name regardless of where you are, to the one who never gives up on you, to the one who has plans for you, even before you were in your mother's womb, even when he knew you were going to say no, even when he knew you weren't going to obey him, but he continues to call your name anyway and he sees you in his image glory to God and he's transferred authority and power over to you because he just loves you like that glory to God on this morning well welcome to the gathering of hearts I'm Regina Banks your GPS the wholeness aka the heart gatherer and this morning your daily dosage is a continuation I'm trying to forgive part four you know what we're doing the daggone thing we are mastering this thing we are getting whole we are whole we're not the same people that we were when we started in january that alone you ought to give god a praise glory to god that you're changing that you're revolving that you're transforming into the thing that god called you to be you don't do the things that you used to do on january 1st but you've gotten better you've made changes in your life you've switched your brain glory to God that you may be able to walk into his will that he has for your life glory to God on this morning he deserves our praise glory to his name hallelujah to you Lord Jesus glory to God and so yesterday glory to God we started talking about how do I forgive someone that has passed on so, you know this forgiveness it has so many facets to it you know when you think that you've gotten it here comes another aspect of it and I'm just so gracious and thankful to God that he just loves us so much that he wants us to get this thing right that he doesn't want any form of unforgiveness in our hearts and so for him to tackle the area of unforgiveness that I have towards someone that is passed on. You know, maybe some people can't relate to this, but this thing hit home for me because there was a person that I was so angry with that I wanted to snatch them down from heaven, cuss them out. Yes, I said it. I wanted to cuss them out and then throw you on back up there and let you give God praise again. And so it's a real emotion that we have sometimes been angry with someone who has passed on, just just mad the way things were left just just mad at some things that you could have done before you left just angry just mad but God is so loving that he won't leave you in that place because that place stops you from walking into the things of God I don't know about you but I know that I am grateful that he loves me that much that he says girl you gotta let that thing go and so I'm excited about this whole um, teaching of unforgiveness and understand this as I'm teaching it to you. God is working with me too. I'm not exempt from this thing. And so sometimes I'm preaching to myself. Amen. But listen, God loves us so much that he wants us to get this thing right. Amen. And so we started out yesterday.
Pastor Day saying one of the ways that we could get over this is to write a letter. Write a letter. We know we're not going to mail it to heaven. We know that they're not going to ever see it. But you are able to get it out. You are able to release this thing. And then we did um, said psychologists have talked about the, the empty chair technique and in that is the same thing you sit a chair before you you speak to that person you say everything it is that you want to say and so today we're going to get to number three if you missed that just just go back on the um, youtube channel and check it out um number three was um donate uh to a charity in their name um, like you could donate to God wants to be whole in their name, right? But listen, you want to donate um, to a charity in their name. Remember, Joyce Meyer has said that when we are trying to um, forgive a person, she said, buy them a gift. So this will be equivalent to that. You know, it doesn't have to be big, whatever it is that will wipe away the pain that's in your heart. It shows now that I've gotten past this. It's a, it's a sign of respect. It's remembering, um, remember, you know, to help others that it always makes us feel better and so when you are able to donate in their name so now you're changing the image that you have of their name you're making their name great in your own eyes so now when you think about that person it's not the anger you know it's not the um, resentment it's not the bitterness no now I've come to a place where I want to honor them and so I'm going to do a donation in their name just as a sign for myself that I have released the person that I am no longer in unforgiveness I can remember the first time I taught this and I said something about Joyce Meyer said by the person a gift and I got so I mean many uh, crazy faces when I was teaching that it was just like like really but yes that, that's a sign of maturity that's a sign that I've gone on you, you know gone past that I've gone on from you know that moment you know when you spend money money is a part of your life when you are able to release money about something that you once didn't like you know you have come a long way that you have truly forgiven them and so again you're making their name great afterwards after the fact after the anger after the resentment because you've now moved on you've now come to a place of forgiveness you've gotten back in the will of God for your life and then the last thing that we're going to talk about on today is um, what psychologists call the reach technique and the R is this, to recall the betrayal. That's the first thing that happens. And that's that's why we've been in a place that we are because we've been recalling it so much. But they're saying now the reach approach is you recall the betrayal. Um, then you, the E is emphasized without judgment or minimizing your own feelings. And so this is a part where it's always hard for people to forgive because they think that they're supposed to come into agreement with the act. No, you're not coming into agreement that what they did to you was right. Right. What you're doing is now you're coming into agreement with God, with the will of God. Now I'm trying to see it from another position. I'm not going to minimize my emotions. I'm not going to minimize how I felt or how I still feel about it because my emotions, my feelings are real. But it's now trying to emphasize with the other person. Maybe they had a bad day. You know, maybe they're broken as well. You know, when you begin to switch your brain and see things from another um, angle, see things from another view that is not about you, that is really about Jesus you what Jesus is about to do in this situation and I know sometimes the things that have happened that you know people will say that's easier said than done and I'd like to suggest to you that we stop saying something is easier said than done because we have what we say when we rely on the strength of Jesus Christ when we rely on the scripture that I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me I no longer say things are easier said than done because now I have the power it's not my own but it's the strength of Jesus that is what I'm I'm relying on to fix my heart heal my heart I'm not relying on my own emotions because if I was relying on my own emotions I would have been fixed a long time ago but when I take it out of my hands when I begin to stop walking in the flesh when I begin to realize exactly who I am that I am deployed from heaven that I am a citizen of the kingdom that I have rights that these things that I that are down here on the earth that I no longer have to carry that I could just transfer them cast my care glory to God on Jesus who cares for me and that he's got it. He'll take care of it. And guess what? He doesn't need my help. He's been doing this for years and he's a perfectionist at it. You know, if I just learn to just give it to him, stop trying to carry something that I can't carry. Because remember, he said his yoke is easy and his burdens are light, not my own. So when I learn now that
that I wasn't even created. I'm not equipped to carry unforgiveness. That is why my heart is having an allergic reaction because the heart was never meant. The heart was never created to carry all of these negative emotions. When God touched the heart and said, beat, when God breathed the breath of life into you, it wasn't that you would be mean. It wasn't that you would be evil, but it was for you to subdue, multiply, and increase on this earth. Amen. And so E is emphasizing with the other person. A is altruism. That's seeing forgiveness as a gift to others and you're self-serving God. You're serving God. Remember I told you, I challenged you last week to see forgiveness as serving God. When I switch my brain and see it a different way, I'm able now to forgive because I'm flushing all of the old thoughts that I had. The thoughts of if I forgive you, I look weak. If I forgive you, I look like a sucker. If I forgive you, I look like I'm allowing you to walk over top of me. No, when I switch my brain, when I forgive you, first of all, I'm doing the will of God. I've gotten back into alignment with the will of God for my life. Secondly, I'm walking in love the way God would have me to. I'm an agent of heaven. I represent heaven. You know how we are when someone does something and you're like, oh my God, they represented that um, restaurant or that establishment terrible. Well, we don't want to be representing heaven terribly terrible, do we? No, we're agents from heaven. It's now time that we switch our brain, that we represent the kingdom of God the way it should be represented. Always um, forgiving, always walking in love. You know, they had that... Um, was that like a slogan, logo? What would Jesus do? And so that's how we've got to operate. We know Jesus wouldn't carry unforgiveness in his heart. We know Jesus forgives quickly. And so we want to adopt those principles. We want to mimic Jesus. And so the, um, the C is uh, commit to the process. We talked about that last week, that I'm committed to doing this thing. I'm committed to walking in forgiveness. It does not matter that they've already passed on. I'm still applying the process, whether they're here on earth or whether they are in heaven with Jesus, I'm still going to forgive them. And then the last one was H. Hold on to your choice to forgive and don't go back. See it as a way of taking care of your health, your well-being and walking in the ways of God. Again, hold on to the choice to forgive. Don't go back. Don't go back to the old you. Remember, God is doing a new thing. Won't you allow it? Will you allow it to take place? Will you allow God to do a new thing or will you hold him up? Will you choose? Listen, when you don't allow God to do a new thing, you're making a conscious decision to stay old. You're making a conscious decision to be stale. You're making a conscious de decision to be non-relevant because you want to hold on to the past. No, don't be a, you know, you know, a non-factor. You want to be relevant and you can only be relevant when you allow God to do this new thing in your life. And so not only are we going to forgive those that are right here on earth with us, we're going to release that thing and we're going to forgive those that have passed on. We're going to give them a pass. They did what they did. It hurt me, but guess what? God is a healer and he will heal me every time. So I don't have time to waste to be mad at somebody else that's up in heaven saying, holy, holy, holy. I need to get my heart together, allow God to fix it, that I may join in and say, holy, holy, holy holy as well. Listen, that's the daily dosage for today. I'm trying to forgive. How to forgive someone who has passed on. Listen, if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole and I am. Hey, listen, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS, the wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there and have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And don't forget, we're one week away from the gathering of hearts. The whole man. Tell your brother, tell your husband, tell your, your nephews, tell your cousins, tell your male neighbors. We're going to have a good time next Thursday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. If you're interested, send me an email, regina at godwantsmehold.org, and I will see you.
send you the Zoom credentials. Again, have a Specwell amazing day. I love you guys a bunch. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. as we wrap up this week on I'm Trying to Forgive. Have a Specwell amazing day, Heartbeat Nation.